Hi everyone, Tyler here from TWA Tech. Today we're going to be talking about adding enhancements to a team vacation tracker in Microsoft Lists. So let's get started. I did a previous video on how to create a team vacation tracker in Microsoft Lists. In this video, I'll be going over step-by-step -step on how to add five different enhancements to the team vacation tracker. First will be rules and alert me. Second, calendar view based on conditional formatting. Third, hours tracking. Fourth, vacation reminders. And fifth, approvals. So the first enhancement is adding rules over an alert me, which are technically more or less the same thing. One is newer to Microsoft Lists, and the other is really part of the older SharePoint list. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to automate. We're going to go to rules. We're going to go to create a rule. And so here we can select whether we want a, an alert or notification if data changes in any one of the items in our list, a new item is created, or an item is deleted. So let's select uh, when an item is changed. So we're going to pick the column. In this case, let's track whether there's a change to a start date. And here we have the different conditions that would need to be met in order to indicate that. So in this case, we'll just change it to anything. And here we can enter the email address or addresses um, that we want to be notified when this happens. So in this case, we'll just select me. We'll click Create. And you can have up to 15 rules uh, live at any given time. If you need to come back and manage it, you can just go here to the automate, go to rules, go to manage rules. And here you can see the rule. We can click on it and make any changes as needed. So let's go ahead and make a change. I'm just going to go ahead and change this from 226. Let's go 225. Uh, actually, no, let me go 227. I'll make this eight hours. So we should get an email notification regarding this change. So here you can see the change was made, and then you can go click on here to the link to the item. And you can see we changed it here from 225, making two different changes. So there you go. OK, so now let's take a look at the other rules. So when a new item is created, here all you need to do is enter in email addresses, contacts you want to be notified when the, when a new record is created or a new list item is created and the other is when one is deleted, same thing, so not as detailed. And the other is the alert me. So let's take a look. You would come up on the three ellipses here. Go to manage alerts. It's going to take you to SharePoint. Here we're going to add an alert. We'll select our list, click Next, <clears throat> and the options are, are very similar to what we just did here. One difference is you can add a text message notification for an alert instead of just uh, email. Um, here, only send me alerts when there's been any changes, when new items are added, existing items are modified, or items are deleted, so similar to what we just had in Rules. Send me alert when anything changes, someone else changes an item, someone else changes an item created by me, someone else changes an item last modified by me. So this part is a little more granular than the rules that we just looked at. So if you needed something more specific in, in this regard, you have this option. And then one last difference here is you can receive notifications immediately when something has changed, or you can have a, a daily summary in case there's many, many changes. You don't want a ton of notifications or you can get, even get a weekly summary. So you can 
pick the time you want it if it's daily and then weekly what day of the week you would like it on and that's that's really everything for their rules and alerts so these features are nice especially from a manager who may not be in the list as frequent um, but can can at least be notified when uh, changes are being made people are adding uh, new vacations to be tracked and it's just a way to have visibility for really across the whole team so um, Now let's take a look at conditional formatting on the calendar view. So we'll go up to all items here. We'll go to calendar view. And you can see here that we have two users, Tester and Tyler Watson, and both are the same color. So what we want to do is make them each their own color. So for every user, you could have a separate color. So we come up here to calendar view again. We're going to scroll down to format current view. So here we're going to select conditional formatting. <clears throat> And then we're going to edit the rule. So we're going to select the column of team member. We're going to say is equal to, and here we'll say Tyler Lawson. And then we're going to pick our color, like green. And click save. Okay, so now you can see here that my color changed. And let's add another rule. Again, for team member, equal to, and here we'll say test. Tester, <clears throat> and we're going to change the color. Let's make it blue. Okay, so we'll click Save. And these are our two users, team members. Each have their own color now. And uh, we'll close that out. And now when you scroll, each will have their own color. And it makes it a lot easier to track the different uh, vacations across different users. The next enhancement is the ability to track each team member's hours. To do this, you'll need to add a new number column in your list. I've already done so here. Team members can then add the number of hours they're taking off at the time they create their vacation. So when you create a new record, you want to take the <clears throat> add the total time taken off. And then what we're going to do is create a view that will summarize those hours. So first, to create the column, you'll just click Add Column, select Number, go to Next, give a name, description, um, decimal places, you can change to zero, and there's no default value. So that'll give the ability to enter those values. And then <clears throat> what we want to do is create a new view. So you come up to your All Items, click Create View, give it a name. Um, and we're going to make this a list view. So I called mine hours, and from here, I added my columns. And what you're going to want to do is <clears throat> we're going to sum the total time taken. So you go up to the uh, column menu, go to totals, go to sum, and then under team member, we're going to want to buy. <clears throat> sorry, we're going to want to group by team member. So here you can see. You have a subtotal for the number of hours for tester and 112 hours subtotal by myself for a total of 344 hours taken. So this will be for everything that's going to be in your list. So you can filter um, by start date. This way, if, for instance, if we want to look at just 2023, we could click here and see just the hours for 2023 or any specific date range. For the next enhancement, I'll demonstrate how to set up upcoming reminders based on the vacation start date. And to do this, we'll go up to the Automate menu tab, select it, set a reminder, and then select Start Date. It's generating a flow, a Power Automate flow, showing you the connectors that are involved in this flow. We'll click Continue. We can give it a, a, the flow a name. Uh, we can select the number of days we want to be reminded before the vacation starts, and then we'll click Create. Click done. Go to your flows. You can see it in your flow list here. We can just click on Edit. And although you don't have to edit it at this point, it's pretty well set up, ready to go. I just want to show you how to go back in if you ever want to change, for instance, the number of days to remind me in, 
We have four. If we want to set that to five, we can change that here and click save. Uh, another thing you may want to update at some point or change is the, the, the trigger. And our, our recurrence, which is done daily, it runs every day at 1500 hours. We can change this to run 4 a.m., 1 a.m., something like that, um, whatever is convenient for you and your team. And then one other point to make is that this flow is only set up for yourself. It's not set up for the entire team. So if you wanted to allow your team to utilize this, you can share it with them. So you can share it with any member of your team, give them access. And then the other way for them would be to do the exact same thing is to go into here and, and, and do the same process themselves. But either way will work and that'll give you uh, give your team a good uh, visibility into the upcoming vacations without having to frequently check the calendar. The last enhancement is adding an approval process to the vacation tracker. And to do this, we're going to use a Power Automate template. So we're going to go to Power Automate. You can go right to templates here, or you can go to my flows, new flow template. Here we're going to do a, well, we're going to go to approvals. We want um, SharePoint list approvals. And what we're looking for is start an approval when a SharePoint list is modified. So we're going to click on that. So these are the these are the connectors. Click OK or click Continue. So we're going to select our list. I'm sorry, our SharePoint site. So I think this is under Research and Development, Vacation Tracker Two, and we're going to add our approver email. So in this case, it will be me. And then we're going to click Create. So we're going to edit this. <clears throat> so this is the template. You can see it's uh, a full approval process flow. Now there's a few changes that I recommend making to help with the process. Um, one, well, first thing is, so this is, the trigger is when an item is created or modified in the SharePoint list. So so even after uh, a new vacation is added, if it's been edited in any way, then the approval process will kick kick off again. If you do not want this, you just want it when a new vacation is added, you can change this um, by going to the plus, add an action, go to SharePoint, and then you can add uh, when an item is created. So. This is what we're using when an item is created or modified, but you can change that to when an item is created. And if you do that, you'll just again have to add in your site address and the list name. But we're gonna leave it as is. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete that, whoops. So the next thing taking out is, I'm gonna remove this, get my profile. It's used under the send an email, and I think it's best to, from here to add take out mail to go to dynamic content and we want to select the team member oh, we can see more the 44 so we want to select the team member uh, email so this way if there is an issue um, with the approval process then the the user who creates the item or changes the item will be notified there is an issue and then they can follow up with with the appropriate people to fix this flow. And then the last change we want to make is under the create and approval. So we want to go to the advanced parameters here and we're going to select requester and then the requester here we're going to select the name of content and we're going to add the team member email here. So this way, the, the, uh, for the, the approval notification that the approver gets, you can see the actual person in the team who requested the, the uh, replication. So this is it. No other changes required. You can go ahead and save this. And now we can give it a try. So we're in the 
tester's user account, we can go ahead and create a new vacation request. Let's do summer vacation. We'll put it for sometime in June. Let's do the 10th through the 14th, so five days. Whoops, make a type. And tester, five eights or 40, and we'll go ahead and save that. So now this will trigger an approval, and now if we come back to Tyler's email or Teams account, we'll see that we received an approval request. So it was sent by tester, and now tester is pending my approval. If I wanted to click on the link, I could. it would take me back to the uh, SharePoint list. So here, if I approve, then tester will be notified of the approval. If I want to reject, I can, or add additional comments. Have a great vacation. And then approve. <clears throat> so now let's come back to tester. Let's go to Teams here, you can see the approval request came back approved and with my comment here with the timestamps. So you can save that for your records. It'll also stay under the approvals. But you can see here there's a list of some requests, some approved. Um, you can access this under the approvals app in Teams. And that's it for the approvals. It's pretty straightforward and uh, very easy to set up and maintain. For more information on this video and more, make sure to visit my website at twatech.com. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. So that concludes my video. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe to my channel to get all the latest technology tips. And to visit my website at twatech.com, where you'll find even more tips and tricks. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.